I greet you all in the name. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a great joy that we can be together as a family today and that we may be able to study together this important topic. And this is the topic that we are actually dealing with the issue of the out of the cities. <clears throat> I just want to say to you, my brothers, my sisters, in this topic, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit for us to be able to know what the Lord says about it. I hope and trust that you can still be able to hear me. Uh, I want to take this time to pray so that the Lord may be guiding us. And as I'm going to be praying, please remember to uh, offer also your silent prayers before God. Let us kneel down for prayer. <clears throat> Our most gracious, loving Father, chat in heaven, we would like to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a time that we can look into your word and again be warned so that we may be able to think more about what you have prepared for us, the warnings that you have given us, so that we may not be found as the unwise virgins without oil in our lamps. So we kindly ask you, Lord, to be with us. Please may you guide my lips, guide my brain cells, touch my brain cells and guide my mouth. And every word that is going to be coming out of my mouth, please, Lord, may it be a word from you. May your name be glorified as we open these scriptures. We ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, at this time I am going to be uh, using English. I'm going to be talking in English so that at least some of my brethren who understand English may be together with me. Just allow me to just uh, pause and just say a word to the Romanians. Frații mei români, vreau să spun în această timp o să vorbesc în limba engleză, pentru că acum sesiunea aceasta este sesiune de limba engleză, dar subiectul este același, că noi discutăm despre această afară din oraș. Anul pe care am zis 1867 este 1876. Dar acum intram în limba engleză. So I've just been telling my brethren that they may be able to understand that now we, are, we have now entered into the English section. So, my brothers and my sisters, we are looking at this out of the cities. Out of the cities. This subject is very important and it needs to be understood by the people of the Lord, especially as we are now living in these last days. I'm going to be with you. Please follow me very well as I talk together with you. I would want us, before we go very far, to go to the book of, um, to the book of Matthew. Matthew. We are going to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 23, verses 37. We are talking about the triumphal entry. Jesus Christ is coming, riding on a donkey, and then he is uh, coming to, to, to Jerusalem. There is something that happened. What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. Matthew 23, verses 37. Yes. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophet and stonest them which are sent unto thee, mm -hmm. how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and he would not. Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 want, I want us to understand something here. Jesus Christ, he is looking right there, he is looking at, um, at Jerusalem, and he begins to cry over Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou thou killest the prophets and stonest those people that are sent to you. How often have I often wanted to gather your children together as the hand gathers a brood under her wings and yet you would not. Behold now your house is forsaken. You will never see me again until you say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I want us to know something that uh, when Jesus Christ was crying he was weeping. There was a problem. What was the problem? Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke, Luke chapter 19 and we are reading together verses 41. Luke chapter 19, verses 41. Luke 19, 
41. What does the Bible say? Let's just read. Mm -hmm. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. So when he came close to the city, the Bible says that he actually wept over the city. He looked at this city that he has loved so much. He looked at that place. Do you remember that Mount of Moria uh, where, G, where, where the lamb was actually sacrificed? You remember Abraham when he was about to go and sacrifice his own son. He was looking at this very same Mount of Olivet and where the same place where Jesus Christ was actually going to be, was actually part of the children of Israel, walking with them and talking with them and preaching to them. And it is these people that he had loved so much. I remember reading from the book of Psalm chapter 48 verses 2 where, 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 where it says beautiful for, beautiful for situation, uh, the joy of all nations. It's Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. So Zion was actually a place where God was actually supposed to be glorified. But something instead was taking place. And Jesus Christ looks at this city and he begins to weep over it. What does he say? Let's go to verse 42. Verse 42 to verses 43. What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. Saying, if thou hadst known, even thou at least in this thy day, mm -hmm. the things which belong unto thy peace, but, but now they are hid from thine eyes. He says, if only you had known the things that were for thy peace. But unfortunately, these things are actually hidden from from thine eyes. I want us to understand something. He's saying that now you do not have peace because these things are hidden from you. I wanted to gather your children together as the hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you would not. You do not, you do not want me to guide you and protect you. Remember, Israel had been given 490 years for them to be able to prove that they were a people of God. And from the year 457 uh, BC uh, to the year 34 AD, all this period was the period where God was actually saying, I want to be with my people. I want to be with my people. And he had given them the time for them to prove that they were the children of God. But unfortunately, they would not. And the Lord says, you know, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, for how long? What else shall I do? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5 verses 4. You see him crying in the same way. Isaiah chapter 5 verses 4. What does the Bible say? Isaiah 5 verses 4. Let's just read. Mm -hmm. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Mm. Wherefore when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes? Look at this. It says, what else could I have done for my vineyard that I did not do? I was looking for it so that at least it could be able to give good grapes, but instead it has brought forth wild grapes. What else could I have done? He is simply saying, I've tried everything, but unfortunately, my people do not want to hear me. Let's go to the book of Romans, I mean Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7. The Lord is still trying to cry with his people. He is trying to bring them to listen to his warnings and to listen to his messages, but these people do not want to listen. What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times. Yes. And the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. Yes. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. The Lord is simply saying, look here, I, I, I am trying all by all means to, to bring them closer to me, but they do not want. Let's go to the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 36, and we are reading verses 16. What does the Bible say? 2 Chronicles chap chapter 36, verses 16, yes? But they mocked the messengers of God and I despised his the words. messengers and they mocked them. Go down. And despise his words. And they despise his words. And misused his prophets until the wrath of God of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. He, he says that I, I tried to bring to them prophets who would be able to be speaking to them. He says they despise them. In fact, when you read verses 14 and verses 15, what does it say? Verses 14. This is 15 of the same chapter. Mm -hmm. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. Yes. And, and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending. They were rising up betimes. It means that rising up early. Yes. And sending. 
because he had compassion on his people. Because he had compassion on his people. Amen, my brethren. I want you to know that he was doing this. He was sending the prophets and then he had compassion on his people. But the question is this. Did his people listen? I want us to understand, my brother, my sisters. Now we come now to the book of Matthew 23, verses 37, where he begins to say, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that clears the prophet and stone it, those people that are sent to you. For how often have I wanted to gather your children together? As a hand that gathered their chicks under her wings, but you would not. You know, he is looking at it, and, and so Christ, when he is crying here, remember, just before him is the garden of Gethsemane, where he is found with the sweat that is dropping together with the blood as he agonizes with the devil on his last final hour. But Christ is not crying about that. Not only that, you should also be able to understand that before him was the cross where he was supposed to be put and crucified on the cross, where he was supposed to be crying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthan, which means that my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Even though he was supposed to be right there on the cross, even though he was going to spend some time with the darkness enshrouding the cross, even though he was supposed to be separated from his father, but the weeping at this time, his tears were not about the fact that he was going to have the self, the self a uh, 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 pity that he was having that, that made him to cry. No, he was looking at Jerusalem, the city that he loved, the city that had rejected him. And he was looking at it and says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I wish you could be able to understand the things that were for thine peace, but, but they are hidden from you. In fact, in, when you read Matthew chapter 23, you will discover that this is the time that he actually had to be preaching the most powerful uh, sermon that he preached. Let's go to the book of Luke, I mean, Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23. We are reading together Matthew 23, verses 15. What is written? Matthew 23, verses 15. Just read. Mm. War unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Mm. For ye compass see and learn to make one pros. Proselyte. Proselyte. Mm -hmm. And when he is made, he make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. He says, you, you actually, you, you, you go over the land and the sea to just go and win one convert. And then after that, you make him two times the child of the devil as you are. You hypocrites. You know, he is speaking. This is the last. He is giving his final sermon. And as he is preaching in this time in the temple. By the way, this was his time, last time that he remained there. He was there in the temple. And then from then on, he moved from there. And then he went outside. And when he went outside, he never came back again. So, it is here that he says, you know, this is your problem. You hypocrites. Look at what he says in verses 25. Just read together with me. Verses 25. What does the Bible say? Yes. War unto you, scribes and Pharisees, yes. hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. He is simply saying, look here, you are trying to clean the outside of the places, and yet inside the things are all right, are not all right. Let's go to verse 27. What does the Bible say? Verses 27. War unto you, scribes and Pharisees, mm. hypocrites, mm. for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, white, sepulchers, mm -hmm. which indeed appear beautiful outward, but, but are within full of dead men's bones mm. and of all uncleanness. Look, at, he is simply, he is still simply saying, you are interested in formalities, but you are not interested in the truth. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are actually, you are looking at, at the sepulchers. You, you are prepared to make sure that they are cleaned and that inside are dead men's bones. In other words, people are interested in looking good outside when actually inwardly they are not prepared to listen to the voice of God. And my question is this, are we not in the same place? Are we not in the same place? Let's go and read together verses 29 and verses 30. What do these people say when they went to the time of Jesus Christ? What do they say? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Mm. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers. If we had been in the days of our fathers. 
we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. You see, look at that. They, they simply say, oh, you know what? If we were in the days of our fathers, we would have been much, much better. We would not kill the prophets. And yet you discover that what happened in the Old Testament, they were ready to kill Jesus Christ. They were ready to be, to be guilty of the blood of the Son of God, whom God did actually send to make sure that they would be saved. I want to ask a question, my brethren. Are we not falling into the same problem today? Has the Lord not given us a lot of warnings that we are still not listening to? If you look at this time Jesus Christ weeping over Jerusalem, you will see that he has been telling them of what was going to take place. But the problem is these people were not prepared to listen to him. It was as though Christ had never spoken anything about it. Go with me again to the book of Luke. Luke, Luke chapter 19. And we are reading verses 42 to verses 44. Look at what is written. Jesus Christ is saying something here. In fact, before we go there, let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. And we are reading together verses 1 and verses 2. What do the disciples do after they have come out of the temple? What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Yes. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Mm. And Jesus said unto them, What did he say? Seeing all these things, that there shall not be left here one stone upon another mm. that shall not be thrown down. Look at that. He is, he is looking at them and he is saying, There is not even one stone that is going to remain on top of another. I, I, I just want you to think, imagine how the disciples were feeling when they came with pride and showing him, Look here, we have got the temple here. 46 years it took for Herod to be able to help in the building of this temple. Look at how beautiful it is. Look at this marble walls. Look at this beautiful, beautiful, how it is beautifully laid out. Look at how beautiful it is. Master, did you look at it? You were inside, but did you see it? And Christ looks at them and he simply says, you know what? Not even one stone is going to remain on top of another. I'm sure they were seriously disappointed. I mean, we are talking of one thing and you are talking of another. Because the Christ was looking at it, he was simply saying, okay, these are white, white sepulchers. But inside, inside the very temple, they are actually dead men's bodies, dead, dead men's bones. And I want you to know, my brother, my sisters, that the, the problem was not the temple. The problem were the people. And I want to ask a question today. What is the problem today? Is it because our churches are not beautiful? I want you to understand that when you go to England, you discover there are so many churches that are there, but now they've become the places for seekers. They've now become the, place, the places for ballroom dancing. They've now, become, they've now been turned into shops. They've actually been sold. Why? It's because the people can no longer be able to attend church. Why? It's because people are turning pagans. But how have we come to these places? Whereby England has been the places where John Wycliffe and, 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 and also the, pe um, uh, uh, the people like Latimer, Ridley, those people who were, who were actually the champions of the gospel. What has happened to the people today? It is because the people have forgotten the word of the Lord and the Lord cries the same cry and he weeps the same weeping where he says, Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kills the prophets and stone those people that are sent to you. How often have I wanted to gather your children together? But you did not want. And I want to say to my sisters today, today we have come to a point whereby we are still acting exactly the same way. They asked this question and Christ said, not even one stone is going to remain on top of another. Then he began to explain how the things were going to be like. But there is something that I want us to understand. Let's go to the book of, of Luke chapter 19, verses 42 to 43. Luke chapter 19, 42 and verses 43. What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. Just read saying if thou hast known even though at least in this day the things which belong unto thy peace mm. but now they are hid from thine eyes right for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee they are going to cast a trench about thee yes and compass thee round and, and keep thee please please can you can you follow the language that is written there he says they shall cast they shall put they shall dig a trench around you and they shall compass thee around Yes. And keep thee in on every side. And they are going to keep thee on every side. Let's go down. And shall lay thee even with the ground, 
and thy children within thee. And your children are going to be right there together with you. Let's go now. And they shall not live in thee one stone upon another. They are not going to live one stone on top of another. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. In other words, you are going to be destroyed like mice. Even though you knew the truth of what I've been talking about. The problem is this. You did not take them to the heart. I want to ask a question, my brother, my sisters. Do we know what the Lord has already spoken about the issue of out of the cities? Or is something that is new for us today? Is it, is it new news? Or it is the same old news that we already knew? When was it that the Lord has already spoken about it? And today we are suffering because of the fact that we did not listen to the voice of God. And I'm saying, shall we add on our suffering to some more suffering without, because we do not want to follow God's way? Can we ask the Lord to be able to reverse his words? I want us to understand my brothers and sisters. The Lord gives a warning. It is our duty to listen. And when we listen, and after we have followed what God has said, I want you to clearly understand, we are going to be safe where the Lord has already told us to be. Do you remember one time when Elijah, after he had finished giving the message to the king, and then the Lord says, now you move from here, go straight to the brook Cherith, which is close to the river Jordan, and there I'm going to send the ravens that are going to feed you there. And I want you to understand that what made Elijah to be fed by the ravens, it is mainly because he went straight to the place where God had said that they was, he was supposed to be there. So he went straight to the place, and when he was right in that very same place, I want you to know that the Lord had to feed him in that place. He did not decide to go to River Jordan, which was closer, because it was bigger and made with much more water. He went to where God had told him to go. I want to tell you something, my brother and sisters. It is time for us to go where God would want us to go. And once we have listened to that, let's let God be able to do his, his work. I was reading from the book, Great Controversy 460, where he says, do what is right because it is right and leave the, all the other consequences with God. It is time to listen to God. Now look at this, my brothers and sisters. The Bible talks about this. They were going to be entrenched around and they were going to be compassed around. And then the Lord says, there is going to be a problem. Read the following verse. What does it say? The following verse as we are reading from the book of Luke chapter 19. We are reading what is going to happen. Verse 43. 43 and 44. 43. For the day shall come upon thee that yes. an enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round. Yes. And keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. Yes. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Go down. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Yes. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein. Okay, thank you very much. I want us to understand this, my brothers and sisters. It is written that God actually had to be sending this message and he told them, please be careful, this is what is going to happen. And I want you to understand, he was talking about the destruction. Destruction. Of Jerusalem. And when you are talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, you are saying, look here, because you have forsaken the Lord, one day Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. Now look at it in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 24. Sorry. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15. What does the Bible say? Matthew 24, verses 15. Just read. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken, spoken of by Daniel the prophet then, in the holy place, mm -hmm. whoso readeth, let him understand. Now he is talking about the issue of, look here, there is going to be the destruction. When ye shall see the abomination that causes desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let him that readeth understand. In other words, you look at what God has said and then you keep the words of God. Can I tell you something, my brother, my sisters? It is time that you keep every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And the moment you keep the words of the Lord, I want you to understand, my brother and sisters, the Lord is going to keep to his word. He's going to stick to his word because God sticks to his word. This is how God he is like. He is, does not change. When you read in the book of Numbers 23, 19, he says, God is not like man that he should lie. Neither is he like the son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then does not act? Does he promise and then does not fulfill? God himself does not change. And so he says, when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let him that readeth understand. And then what is this? Let's jump. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 21. We are reading verses 20. What does the Bible say? What is this abomination of desolation that causes desolation? What is that? Luke chapter 21 verses 20. Mm -hmm. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. Now, now compassed with armies. Now this is abomination of desolation. Mm -hmm. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then you should know that the destruction is nigh. 
Now look at this. I want to go back to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15. Now we are reading verses 16. And then I'll come back to Luke chapter 20, 21, verses 21. Look at what it says, verses 16 and verses 17. When you shall see the abomination that causes desolation spoken of by prophet Daniel, let him that read it understand. And then verse 16, what does it say? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Flee to the mountains, yes. Let him which is on the housetop not come to down, not come down to take anything out of his house. Thank you. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Mm -hmm. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Look at that, my brother. This is talking about the issue of how it would be during the time of the destruction of Jerusalem. And then he also, remember, it was destruction of Jerusalem, Matthew 24, is about the destruction of Jerusalem and also about the end of the world. Because you remember, if you go back to Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 and verses 4, what does the Bible say? Matthew 24, verses 3 and verses 4. Mm -hmm. And he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, What did they say? Tell us, when shall these things be? And? And what shall be the son of thy coming and the end of the end of the world? So he, they really wanted to see, okay, what is going to be the end of these things? When is the Jerusalem going to be destroyed? And they also wanted to say, what are the signs of the, of the end of this world? We want to know. So they wanted to know. So Jesus Christ had to tell them, first of all, about the destruction of Jerusalem. He said, when you shall see, let's go back again to Luke chapter 21, verses 21. It tells us, when you shall see Jerusalem encompassed by the Roman army, you should know that the destruction is very close. And then read again verse 20 and 21. And when ye shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, yes. then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Thank you. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, yes, and, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Yes, go down. For these be the days of the vengeance that mm. all things which are written may be fulfilled. Thank you very much. I, I want you to understand that the Lord is simply saying, if you are in, please, if you are outside, please just go. Go straight to the mountain. If you are on top of the roof, don't come down and go into your house. Just get down and go straight to the mountain. And you know what? I want you to understand that the Christians who listen to these messages, they ran straight to the mountains of Pella. And then that's where they found their, their rescue. My question is this. When was this? When did this take place? Let me tell you something. Jerusalem was actually surrounded by the armies of Rome in the year AD, AD 66 and, and a half, or AD 67. This was under the leadership of Cestius. Cestius, the Roman, the Roman uh, general, the Roman uh, army commander. He is the one who came now, and then they went there, and then they surrounded the city. But somehow, without any notice, Without any, any, any reason that is well known, what they did is that they began to retreat. And when they were retreating, you know what happened? Uh, uh, the people who were inside, the soldiers of, 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 of Israel, they simply said, okay, now we are now going to be able to follow them. And they began to pursue them. And when they were pursuing them, they simply said, yes, we are very strong. Look at this. We are pulling, pushing them away, away. This is a blessed city. Not knowing that Jesus Christ had already said, said that you should leave this place why is because you have rejected and therefore have rejected you and i wanted to know my brother my sisters in the year ad 70 titus they came again the roman army under titus and when this came when they came back again the city but something interesting is this it was let me just put this one very clear together with you it was only between this time between ad it was within this time that only the Christians could be able to go straight to the mountains to Pella during this time. It was the time for them to move out of the city of Jerusalem and be able to go straight to the mountains. I wanted to know my brothers and sisters. We are looking at this thing. This is a scenario that is telling us about how are we supposed to be going out of the cities? This is the question. And I want you to know something. Let's read now from the book Testimonies, Volume 5. Testimony, Volume 5, 15, 5T, pages 464. Just have a look at that. 5T, pages 464. I, I think it's paragraph 2. Just have a look at that. Go. 5T, 464. Look at that. 464. Have you found it? It is no time. 
Okay, yes. What does it say? It is no time for God's people to be fixing their affections or laying up their treasures in the world. Yes. The time is not far distant when like the early disciples we shall like be forced the early disciples what should we do we shall be forced to seek a refuge in desolate and solitary places the time is not far far distant when like the disciples of old we may have to flee straight to the mountain into the places that, that are of uh, into desolate places or the places that are scarcely populated let's go down as the siege of jerusalem by the roman armies was the signal for flight to the Judean Christians. Right. Where was this one? It was in the year AD 66. This was a sign. Let's go down. So the assumption of power on the part of our nation in the decree uh, enforcing the papal sab sab Sabbath will be a warning to us. In other words, when they are going to be able to give this is Sunday law, Sunday law, then what will be? What, what is it going to be? Let's go down. It will then be time to leave the large cities preparatory to leaving the smaller ones for retired homes. It is retired pla uh -huh. retired homes? places among the mountains. Thank you very much. He says it is th the time to leave what? The large cities. In preparation to leave the small ones as we'll be going to the secluded homes in the mountains. I want us to understand something here, my brother, my sisters. When was, because it's written that we need to understand this. Oh, by the way, before I can go very far, this one was written, I think this is in the year 1885 when this message was actually given. And I want us to remember this, that when the Lord gave this, he says, you know what, as the uh, uh, Jerusalem was actually from this was the sign for them to leave but they could not leave when Jerusalem was surrounded by the armies only when there was a time or a little time of peace between the first which I would call here the first one and the second siege and, and between these two this was the time that they could be able to leave the uh, the city and they were to go straight to the mountains and then sister white says around 1885 he says she says here that uh, during the time when as, as, as the surrounding, the siege of Roman army uh, against the, 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 um, um, the Jerusalem was actually a sign to the Judean Christian. So also the assumption of power, Sunday law on the part of, of the Protestants, of the papacy, this false Sabbath, he says it is also going to be a time for us to be able to be leaving the large cities in preparation to go to the secluded ones. Now, I want you to be, please, here is where I want you to focus your attention on. I want us to understand that it is in this time, during the time of Cestius, that when they were surrounded, they could not be able to go outside. But finally, when there was a space between the first siege and the second siege, that was the time. And I want, allow me to remind you, when Sister White was writing this, it was during the time when the Sunday law was actually coming, and it was the Sunday law was actually prepared by, by, by the senator who was known as Blair. And so it is known as the Blair Bill. This is history. You can easily be able to check on, to check on that. By the year 18, 1888. So they were about to pass over the Sunday law in this time. But please be to God. The Lord saw that his people were not prepared. And during the very same time, the Lord sent the messages of righteousness by faith by 80 Johns and Wagner for them to be able to go and preach to the people and tell them them about what was about to happen but at the same time they send this man A.T. Jones to go and be able to defend the position straight from the court of justice to go and tell them to the supreme court and be able to tell them that it is not good for them to be able to give that Sunday law so they went there and they, they defended and finally you can imagine during that time it was stopped I mean the Sunday law was stopped it was no longer allowed to be to be going, I mean, to be to be used. It was no longer applied. Now, I want to ask a question, my brother, my sisters. When this happened, when it was no longer allowed to be applied, my question is this. Can't we honestly be able to say that this was the first siege, the first siege of not the old Jerusalem, but also the spiritual Israel? When the Sunday law was about to be given, it stopped. Just like when the first siege was 
given and then from then on they moved backward there was going to come another one i want to ask a question my brother my sisters is there a son of the lord that is coming is there a day that we are going to have the mark of the beast for sure there is coming a time and so when that time is going to come we need to understand that there is coming a time when you will try to be able to move out of the cities and you will not be able to move so when is the time now is this is the time How do I know about that? now please allow me to go with you very well in the spirit of prophecy because we need to understand what is written let's go to the book of last day events last day event we are going to pages 95 to pages 100 i'm just going to be together with you on these pages but i would want you to look at the years now i'm looking at the year 1882 1882 tap you can be able to help to find 1882 you you need to be able to understand what is the message that was given in 1882 because in 1885 the message was the son the law will come and that will be a sign to leave the cities now let's see 1888 passed and then the son the law was not given and now the question is this what was the message but before we got there i want to read in the year 1882 um what is it that the lord has he has actually said, if you have not found it, you can give me, I try to help you. 1882, I just want to read to you what happened during this time, 1882. There is a message that was given well before that time. Look at this. Allow me, just give me just a moment that I can be able to read this one together with you. I found it. It says, parents flock with their families to the cities because they fancy it easier to obtain a livelihood. They than in the country. The children having nothing to do when not in school obtain a street education. From evil associations, they, they acquire habits of vice and dissipation. I want to ask a question. My brother, my sister, is this true of our children today? Are, are they surrounded by that atmosphere of the country or of the city? What type of behavior are they coping? Who, are they coping the behavior of the parents who are people who fear the Lord or they are copying the behavior of the street kids or they are getting the street language and also the street education. What is happening? And I'm going to go down and I'm going to read together with you in 1902. 1902. Let's go down. 1902. Now the time is gone. Blair Bill was not passed. Now we are going in 1902. What is written? Did you find it? Let's just read there about three of them. Just read 1902. Yes. Are we there? We are going to the book, uh, Last Day Events. Last Day Events. Page. Yeah, from pages 95 to pages 100. But I'm going to, to put them in years so that we can be able to understand what is happening. Uh -huh. 1902. Yes. You found it? Yeah. Okay, just read. The cities are to be worked from outposts, said the messenger of God. Right. Shall not the cities be warned? Yes, not by God's people living in them, but mm -hmm. by their visiting them to warn them of what is coming upon the earth. Thank you very much. It's, it's written that hey, the cities shall be warned. Some people say, oh, you know, I'm in the cities and I'm working. And my first question is this. How many people have warned to the Lord as you have been staying in the cities? Is it surely because you wanted to win the people in the cities or you wanted a comfortable life? You need to be able to be thinking about this because remember, we are not lying to God, we are lying to ourselves. What is the reason that has caused us to be able to be losing our children? Is it not because we are looking for the comfort of this world and then we lose our own children? And the Lord has written this in this is 1902. And by the way, let me remind you this. Let me just go back a little bit. In the in the year 18. 94, there is a statement that is given. Sorry, instead of giving you 1902, I was supposed to give you 1894. Look at what is written. Mm -hmm. 1894. For your information, in the year 1892, uh, Ellen White had to give a message very clearly. And then she said, look here, people are supposed to be moving out of the cities. This is 1892. Just about four years after the Blair Bill was actually stopped. 1892. And the message was this. They are supposed to be moving out of the cities. And in the date of 20, uh, December 22, in 1893, the leader of the church wrote a letter to Ellen White and simply said, look here, about 100 to 200 families are about to leave the cities and they are about to go and into the countryside. And Ellen White had, had this to, rem to remind them, look at what is written. 
uh, uh, during this, uh, this 1893. Let's go to car, uh, living CL, CL pages 25. Ellen White begins to, to write to them CL pages 25. And this is from page 25 to page 28. I'm going to be picking just a few of them. Ellen White is now giving the advice to these people. What does she say? This is CL page 25. Just, just read. Mm -hmm. Your letter tells me, my brother, that there are many who are st stirred deeply to move out of Battle Creek. Yes. Now listen, listen. This is 18, by the way, this is 1893, 22 December. Now listen to what she says, yes? There is need, great need. There of is work, need, great need. Of this work being done and now. And for this work being done when? And now, in other words, you are saying 1893, this work of moving out of the cities, it has to be done and now, but, go down. Those who have felt at last to make a move, let it not be in a rush. Mm, in those who at last finally have understood this message, let it not be in a rush. Amen. Amen, my brethren. We need to be able to understand that the Lord still has love for his people. He is still trying to save them. And he simply says, those people who have finally understood my message, okay, it's very good. It has to be done and it has to be done now. But be careful. What does he say? Mm -hmm. Let it not be in a rush, in an excitement, or in a rush manner. Or in a way that hereafter they will deeply regret that they did move out. Let, let me tell you this. It is written that let it not be in a rush or in an excitement. Let, they should not be able to go there and finally be able to, to say, oh, uh, I wish I had not done that. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Out of the cities is the message that God has given. And we are, this is 1893, when she's saying, let it be done and let it be done now. Even though the first Sunday law had actually been waived and now there was were, they were going to come the second Sunday law, which we are actually waiting for. So I believe that between 1888 and also the coming Sunday law, this is the time that we are supposed to have long left the large cities and gone to the, to the smaller cities or to the villages and where we would have our land and we can be able to till the land in preparation to leave these places to go to the secluded places in the mountains. Look, look at that. So, I want you to understand that she gives the advice and she says, those people who are supposed to be moving, please, let them make sure that they are not doing it in a rush or in an in a, in a, in a issue of excitement. You can read that one in Country Living, page 25 to 28. But as they go, make sure that they calculate what are they going to be able to do when they go to the countryside. Because there is a change of life, a lifestyle. We have got to be changed. Can I tell you something, my brothers and sisters? The Lord would want us to heed to this message. He knows that the moment we get used to the country life, when the time of the persecution comes, you're already ready to stand on the side of the Lord. Look at this. Let's go back. Let's go back again to, to the book, Last Day Events, page 95 to pages 100. And we are now going to the year 1902. What do we find? 1902. Just read. 1902. What do we find? The cities are to be worked from outposts. Yes. Say the messenger of God, shall not the cities be warned? Mm. Yes, not by God's people living in them, right. but by their visiting them to warn them of what is coming upon the earth. Thank you very much. It's written that God's people are actually supposed to work the cities, but not stay in them. You want to go and work the cities, go and work those cities, but you've got to be coming from outside. You are going there to work the cities. You are going to warn the people of the dangers that are coming. I want you to understand, my brother and sisters, that thousands of cities are going to perish. Yes, they are going to be destroyed by the judgments of the Lord simply because the people have forgotten to follow God and they are ready to break the commandments of God. And I want you to understand, my brother and sisters, God, he is weighing everything. And by the way, the cup of the wrath of God is about to be filled. He is about to be filled. He is about to be filled. And he is ready to go and destroy the cities. And so the Lord says, hey, please, out of the cities. Go back again, and if you're finished, uh, 1902, look for another one again, 1902 again, you will find another one. There are actually about three of them. Look at that. Mm -hmm. For years I've been given special light that we are not to center our work in the cities. For years! Ellen says that I have been given 
special light that we should not center our work in the cities. Can I just remind you this, my brother, my sister? Do you know that our sanitariums, our, our sanitariums should not be in the cities? One. Do you know that our schools should not be in the cities? The only things that could be in the cities are the restaurants. But the schools, the sanitariums, and our families are supposed to be outside the cities. And my question is this, how many of us are still listening to that counsel that was given a long time ago? And the Lord says, the Lord, for years, the Lord has given me this very same message. My brother, my sisters, can I just, can I just be able to remind you, my brother, my sisters, as I'm talking to you right now, I, I wish we could have listened a long time ago. I remember when I was coming from England, I mean, during this time of the coronavirus, can I, can I just remind you, what would it how would it have been if you were already in your secluded area and you were already in your place and then you were in the countryside and then when you are there and then they simply say, okay, now we are closing up. You can't go and buy in the shops and you go into your retired place. How would it be like? I'm telling that it would not be the same with the person who is staying in the block in an apartment and where they are, they've got only a, a little space that they have. They can't even have the green grass close to them. And I want you to understand the brothers, my sisters, that are God himself in his mercy has given us this message. And do you know that Adventists, the seven day Adventists, were supposed to be the most, the wisest people under the sun. We were supposed to be finishing the world with the messages that the Lord has been so good and so merciful to give us so that we can be able to give it to the other people. We were supposed to be the, the head in education, in family, in children, I mean family raising, and also in, also in our marriages. We were supposed to be the head and not the tail. But because we have now taken the, the, the servant of the Lord and we have thrown him away from our lives. And because we have decided not to listen to the pen of inspiration. Because we did not decide to listen to the spirit of prophecy. Now like the chickens, we are now uh, put together in the same places. And we have got to suffer together with the world. When we are supposed to be in the places where we would be relaxed. I want you to, remind, to, be reminded, to be reminding you, my brother, my sisters, some few months ago, I mean, some few weeks ago, I've been in England, and when I've been there, I've been, listening, I've been doing the work of the Lord, I've been preaching. And then after that, when I came back, I got into the flight, and I got to preach, and when I landed into Romania, what happened is that the moment I got into the, into the airplane, I mean, into the, at the airport, they simply told me, okay, now, look here, you are going to be quarantined at your home two weeks. You know what? I was very happy. Why is because to me that was nothing like quarantine after all my wife still wanted me to be quarantined at home at least to be able to stay with her for these two weeks and so when I came home I came home and I was there but because I'm still inside I mean I'm in the countryside and I can still be able to walk about and up and down I would actually go inside the, the house get outside and go to the garden I go into the greenhouse I go outside I go and I dig into the garden so I would not even feel anything like you know what I'm quarantined one of my friends would actually be able to come in fact a police a policeman would actually come to me and simply say you know I've come to see you let me see how are you and then he would actually love to be in the same quarantine that I was together with him why is because I'm in the countryside, but this is not the best countryside that I'm supposed to be in. I'm supposed to move out of this place to go into the some more secluded areas where we have got enough, much more power. Do you remember what happened in Wang and during that time when those people were actually closed inside their homes and you know, when they were there to put also the locks on their doors so that they could not be able to go outside and you were there on the 17th floor and right there locked up and you could not be able to come outside. Some of those people, they committed suicide opened the windows and they threw themselves outside. They simply said, if I don't die of hunger, I'm going to die of the coronavirus. If I don't die of coronavirus, hey, what, what, what is it that I'm now hearing? I'm now here. I'm just here alone, secluded. I'm, t I'm out of touch with the world. But can you imagine? Can you ask? Let, let me remind you, my brother, my sisters. If you were in the countryside and then they would simply say, now is the lockdown, what would you feel? Nothing. I mean, because you are already, and they say, okay, please, two meters apart. You don't even have any problem. You are already a, a, a number of meters away from your neighbors, and you are right at your place, and you don't even feel anything. I want you to know, my brother, my sisters, to listen to God's message. It is always important. Look at what is written. Just read. Continue to read. Mm -hmm. Just read. It is not God's will that his people shall settle in the cities where there is constant turmoil, and confusion. Right. Their children should be spared. These for the whole system is demoralized mm -hmm. by the hurry and rush and noise. Mm. 
That's in 1902. I want you to go. Please go 1903. What do we find? 1903. I'm still, the reason why I'm reading these ones, I'm trying to read them in a chronological order, is for us to be able to understand whether the message has changed. Because some people, there are some messages today that are simply saying, no, don't talk about out of the cities now. You know, we have got to wait until the Sunday law comes. My brother, my sisters, I want you to understand something. We need to listen to the pen of inspiration. If in 1893, the Lord was saying, this is the time, 89, I mean, 1902, the message was still out of the cities. What is written in 1903? Let's read. Mm -hmm. Iniquity abounds in a nation. Yes. There is always to be heard some voice grieving, warning, and instruction. Yes. As the voice of Lord was heard in Sodom. Mm -hmm. Yet Lord could have preserved his family from many evils had he not made his home in this wicked, polluted city. Yes. All that Lot and his family did in Sodom could have been done by them even if they had lived in a place some distance away from the city. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. In other words, what Lot did, what Lot did, Lot did a work, but, but when he did his work in the city, you know what happened? He only managed to save himself and his wife was lost. Lot was a man of a lingering spirit. And my question is this, are we not having the lingering spirit? Well, I won't forget, I was reading a statement from, from the book Country Living. And when I was reading that statement, and, and uh, Sister White says, it was already past two o'clock when I was busy striving with some families to listen to God. And when I checked my time tonight when I was looking at that, it was two 18, it was already past 2, and I said, how can it be that, you know, the servant of the Lord was actually shown past 2 o'clock, and when I was studying this issue, it was already past 2 o'clock, when I was studying the very same matter, and I wanted to understand my brother and sisters that the Lord is simply saying, be out of the cities, out of the cities, this is the message, go down. Uh, what what we find? Four. It is time for our people to take their families from the cities into more retired localities. It is time for our people to move out of the cities. It is time. Look at this, my brother and sister. This is 1904. So if, uh, if somebody would rise up and simply say, no, it is not the time. My question is this. Who was inspired by God? The one who is speaking now, the one who has already been, who has, was, who, whom we have already proved that she was already inspired. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Else, many of the youth and many of those older in years will be ensnared and taken by the enemy. Mm. So what is the message? Let's go again to the next one. 19, have you finished that one? Mm -hmm. 1905. Okay, let's go again. 19, 1905. I think there is also another 1904. Okay, let's go. 1905. Just read. There is not one family in a hundred who will be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually by residing in the city. There is not even one family that is going to be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually by residing in the city. Let's go down. Faith, hope, love, happiness can far better be gained in retired places mm. where there are fields and hills and trees. Hey. Take your children away from the sights and sounds of the city, mm. away from the rattle and and din of streets, and din of streets, streets mm. cars, and teams. And their minds will become more healthy. It will be found easier to bring home to their hearts the truth of the word of God. In other words, they will be able to understand the truth of the word of God much, much better if they are out of the cities. Let's go down. You're still there in the, in the year 1905. To many of those living in, in the cities who have not a spot of green grass to set their feet upon, mm -hmm. who year after year have looked out upon filthy courts and narrow alleys, Brick walls and pavements and skies clouded with dust and smoke. Right. If this could be taken to some farming district surrounded with green fields, the woods and hills and brooks, the clear skies and the fresh, pure yes. air of the country, mm -hmm. it would seem almost like heaven. You know, in other words, they would look at that and say, wow, I've actually reached heaven. Why? is because they are in the place where they are free. I, I wanted to know, my brother and sister, today as I'm talking to you, because of the coronavirus, we, you know what I'm talking about, that is truth. And the reason why I'm, today I'm going to be speaking to you, I'm speaking to you through this media. It is because, because of this problem of the pandemic that is actually around us, that is, that is destroying us, that is, that is giving us this tough time. But had we been in the countryside, I wanted to know my brother and my sisters, we would actually be hearing of the problems on the other areas. But as for us, we would be spared of God because we would have listened to God.
And my, press, my question is this, my brothers and sisters. If the Lord will give us at least some time of peace after this coronavirus, because I believe that the things are going to become worse. If the Lord would be merciful to us to give us at least some time of peace. And my advice, my prayer is this, that you move out of the large cities. Look for a place where you can be able to, to move to the countryside, where you can be able to grow your own crops. And if you are in the places, in the lands, where you know that you cannot be allowed to do that, my prayer is this, look for the places where you came from. Buy a land. And when you buy that land, you should be prepared. Just go and make sure that you have, you have actually uh, put a hedge around it. And then from then on, you simply work now to simply go and begin to finish your own place in the secluded area. And when you do that, I want you to know, my brother, my sisters, when the time comes, you can simply be able to get into the plane and go back to your place and you can be able to be there. So my prayer is this. Do not spend your time in the cities without going to listen to what God has said. Go down. The physical surroundings in the cities are often a peril to health. Mm. The constant liability to contact with disease, the prevalence of foul air, yes. impure water, mm. impure food, the crowded dark, unhelpful dwellings are some of the many evils to be met. It was not God's purpose that people should be crowded into cities, mm. huddled together in terraces and tenements. Look at that. Which year is that what? 1905. 1905. Have you ever stayed in that block where somebody would come with a cigarette and begin to smoke? And they smoke in spec This time I understand they have even allowed the people to be smoking weed. It's now, it's now allowed by, by, by the government that people can be able to go and smoke weed. And can you imagine, too, I mean, as for you, you are staying closer to a place where some boys would simply, some young people would be, simply go outside your house, outside your apartment, and then with your windows that are open, and then they begin to smoke. And the smoke of their weed is actually coming into you, of marijuana, is coming into you. And can you imagine, are you still breathing that pure air? No way. But if you're out in the forest, running just like the gazelles, and then you are there and then you are seeing the nature and you are looking at the beautiful flowers and especially during the time of the spring and you are looking at what is happening and maybe you are close to a brook to a small river that is flowing by and you are looking at the, at the vast nature that is before you. How reviving it would be. Let's go to the next one. 19... There's another one from 1904. Yes, 1904. Again, let's read. Mm -hmm. It says... Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities. Look at that. Again and again. This is 1904. It says again and again. The Lord has instructed that our people should be able to go out of the cities. My brothers, I'm still fighting the same message. Are we, are we supposed to say now is the time or we are supposed to say that now is not the time? Again and again. The Lord has already shown. Go down. Mm -hmm away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions for in the future the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one we should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again get out of get out of the cities into rural districts where there, where, where the houses are not crowded closely together yes. and where you will be free from the interference of enemies let me tell you something you say that the problem of buying and selling the Lord says, out of the cities, out of the cities. Where is this one? 1904. Look at that, my brother, my sisters. The time is now that we are supposed to be leaving the city. And I want you to know, my brother, my sisters, we do not have the time to waste. Because I don't know when the second attack is going to come. I don't know how it is going to be like. Look at what is written in 1908, 1906, and 1908. Uh, you found 1906? 1906, just look at that, and then you give us 1908. What, what do you find? Mm -hmm. Not highlighted. But. Okay. For the present, some will be obliged to labor in Chicago. Okay. But these should be preparing working centers in rural districts. They should be preparing for working centers in rural districts. Mm -hmm. From which to work the city. For, from which to work the city. Okay, fine. Let's go to 1908. I, I'm simply trying to prove one thing. Look at this. As the years were actually increasing, the Lord was not saying, now, okay, now you can now be able to go and relax. No, the message was go out of the cities, out of the cities. By the way, when I was studying, I discovered that uh, 1909, 1918, and died only two years later. And I wanted to 
to understand my brother and sister that she actually was a board member at, at Madison, which had actually hectares and hectares of land. And they had to put there a school, and they had to put there a sanitarium. And I want you to know, my brother and sisters, you might not have to go and put a school in a sanitarium, but you need to take your families away from the places, uh, from the places of the cities, and you got the places that are secluded. What is written? Yes? We say again, out of the cities, do we not consider it... Again, out of the cities, yes? Do not consider it a great deprivation that you must go into the hills and mountains, mm. but seek for that retirement where you can be alone with God Daddy. to learn his will and way. Mm. I urge our people to make it their life work to seek for spirituality. Yes. Christ is at the door. Christ is at the door. This is why I say to our people, do not consider it a privation uh, when you are called to leave the cities and move out into the country places. Thank you. Here there are way to reach blessings for those who will grasp them. By beholding the scenes of nature, the works of the Creator, by studying God's handiwork, mm. imperceptibly you will be changed in the same image. Thank you very much. I want us to understand, my brother, my sister, I could go on and on and on. All I want us to understand is this. Now is the time for us to leave the last six cities. But we need to be able to understand that we do not do this one in a rapid way. In fact, we, you read the advice for Sister White from Can't, Can't Live in pages 25 to 28. And she says that, you know, there are some people who are very good at talking. I remember I was, I was visiting one man. We had moved straight into the mountains. And he got there. He, was, um, he said, you know what, I am I'm, I'm a, a vegetarian. And he got there when he, when he saw that the things were very tough. He said, oh, you know what, my brother, I've discovered that the out of the cities from this pulpit is different from the out, out of the cities in reality. And then he went there, but he had to struggle his way through. And until today, he has not even bought even Holland in the same place. He would actually leave his family. He would go and be able to work sometime and you come back again and you develop the place. And now I can tell you he is miles away from us. We have not moved an inch away from where we are. So I want us to clearly understand my brother and sisters. Even though he had found it tough but he is already used. But as for some of us we have got to go and start now getting used to the tough, to the, to the tough life. And I want us to know, my brother and sisters, by the way, you don't just take my word for it. You need to look for God as the one who is going to help you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and I heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And the Lord is simply saying, Take my, come and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Learn of God. And not only that, if you read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 7, which is our last verse today. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to verse 7. Look at what is written there. Just read. Trust in the Lord with, with all, all thine heart, heart. Yes. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Yes. In all thy ways acknowledge, acknowledge him, him and, and he shall direct thy paths. And he shall direct thy paths. So what is needed is that at this time before you make any movement, first of all think of what you are going to do. With whom are you going to be moving? What place are you going to find? What are you going to do in that area? In other words, you think of all these things. Sit down with your wife, with your children. Decide together. Make sure that you make the movement. Listen to these messages as a message that maybe you will not be able to hear it again. But I want you to understand, my brother, my sisters, he who is, the Sister White says that the ones we have got, the lands are kings and queens. Allow me just to, to show you this as I, as I pray together, together with you. Look at this. And this statement, I'm just looking, I'm, I, I, just wanted to, I just want to read this one together with you. This written in 1885, E.G. says, The time is not far distant when like the early disciples, we shall be forced to seek a refuge in desolate and solitary places. And I want to read this one, which is 1897, which says, the, the, which, which says uh, the pressure of the Sunday law has come and is coming we can see that this law causing the Sunday to be exalted and making human inventions take the place of God's holiday is now being fulfilled. 1903. It says the time has come when as God opens the way, families should move out of the cities. You find the same statement in, in Adventist home pages 139 paragraph 4. And then in 1903 again, Ellen White wrote, get out of the cities as soon as possible. My brothers, my sisters, I've just tried to give you again in the same chronological order so that you may be able to see that the message was actually uh, 
putting more accent as the time was actually moving away from 1888 and we are moving closer to the Sunday law. So my brothers and my sisters, I want to leave this issue together, with, I mean before you, to simply say as the Lord has already given us the message, let us stay closer to the Lord and let's listen to him and the Lord is ready to hear our prayers. I want to ask a question, how many of us here? understood something today how many of us have understood something today yes thank you very much number two how many people believe that what you have been learning is the truth amen and number three how many people would want to say lord please help me i also want to find my place in the outside in the outskirts of the cities I'm in the countryside i'm one of you together with my family we are actually raising up our hands we want the lord to be able to help us even to move even from this countryside which is just outside the village we would need to go at least to some to some areas that are at least um uh, some open areas where we can be able to be there and with our families my brothers and my sisters want to take this time to pray may the lord be able to bless us as we are going to be walking together with the lord remember the lord is going to open the way for you Let's just pray. Pray fast and let God be your guide. Let us pray. Oh, Father, church in heaven, we are so thankful for the time that you have given us. We are so thankful, Lord, for this time because we know it is only you, Lord, who has given us a time that we can be able to look at the truth that you have given us and you would want us, Lord, to be saved in your kingdom. So I'm praying, Lord, at this time that you may remember your children at this time who would want to move out of the cities. Lord, we are looking at what is happening even with our children who are actually being taught the wrong things like the sex education and also being taught that they can be able to go into the vices of this world and they are taught that they can be able to be able to smoke marijuana and be able to destroy their lungs and yet we still remain somehow relaxed in the places where we are. Please, Lord, forgive us and help us, Lord, to make a move as quickly as is possible. But please, our Father, we are asking, Lord, that soon after this coronavirus, soon after this pandemic, we may be able to find some time when we can be able to look for our places, secluded areas, where we can be able to go and rest with our families. Help us, Lord, to have this time. As we are going to be fasting and praying, allow us, Lord, to listen to your voice. Thank you, our Father, for hearing our prayers, for we leave all these things in the name of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, thank you very much for the time that we have spent together, that we have been together and we have been uh, uh, studying together. We praise the Lord for this. And I want to say, my brothers and my sisters, for next week, the same time, we are going to be dealing with the issue of the dangers of time setting the dangers of time setting. If the Lord still continues to inspire me the way he has inspired me for me to be able to do this, by the way, I did not sleep the whole of this night just preparing for these messages. And I want you to know that it is because I had been impressed by God from Sunday, I think it was Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The, it was confirmation of this message and I strongly believe that the Lord wanted us to be able to hear this message for this. Be with us. And so we are going to be meeting again time as we are going to be studying with the issue of dangers of, of time setting. May the Lord be with us. Amen. Maranatha.